Life's too short to drive boring cars. So if you've been shopping for a used car, either a private sale like this or possibly on a car lot, there's definitely some things you want to keep an eye on. It's not just about the shiny paint. If you see these following things, don't walk away, run away. All right, so there's the obvious things. When you're buying a car, people are always looking at some things. Superficial, the dealers like to dazzle you with their nonsense. For example, oh yeah, it's got a new windshield. Yeah, that's amazing, right? Great for 250 bucks, not a big deal, but they'll dazzle you with that. As well as tires. I mean, tires aren't cheap on their own right, but honestly, $1,500, you wanna make sure you have decent tires and the brakes are decent too, because it, it doesn't take long to spend a thousand or $2,000 on a set of brakes all the way around. But those are relatively superficial and relatively easy to replace with a relatively modest amount of money. The real problem comes in what's underneath. What's underneath the hood? What's going on inside the engine compartment or in the transmission that you can't see? And there's lots of tricks and the dealers sometimes like to hide those things from you or used car salespeople like to hide some of those issues. But let's start with the first one that can really bite you in the rump. All right, and then there's a big one here. So one thing you want to do if you're walking up to a car, whether it's a cold start in the morning, that's what I would recommend. Don't do a warm start on a vehicle. Make sure that the person selling the car gets in the vehicle and does a cold start for you so you can witness. Then what you want to do is come down here and make sure when they're starting that engine that there isn't a strange amount of smoke coming out of the exhaust. For example, blue smoke might indicate oil burning. Heavy black smoke might indicate some rich running condition and there might be some problems with fuel injectors, fuel pumps, or just the general mixture. So definitely cold start and watch the exhaust while they're turning the key. The biggest trick is not being the person turning the key because then you don't get the chance to see smoke. That could ind indicate also if you're seeing blue smoke, that could be an indicator for bad piston rings, for valve guide seals, and that could just translate to big dollars out of your pocket. Then another big one that you really want to pay attention to is what's going on under the hood. Well, you can't always see everything. You can flip the hood up and wow, look at all those hoses and pipes. Wow, dazzling, right? And you might even look at it and chances are the salespeople have even done a, an armor all or basically clean the engine compartment so it looks dazzling. But don't let that fool you. What you want to do again as part of the start is right after you look for that smoky startup, as they started that engine, you want to hustle back up to the front of the engine and you want to listen and you want to hear, particularly usually in the front of the engine. Because even more so when a car is cold, you might get a rattling timing chain noise and that'll sound like a very metallic clink or a clink sound and you might get that in the front of the engine. Clear indication that you could have a loose timing chain, bad tensioner parts, or low oil pressure which doesn't pump it all well enough. And if you're hearing that rattle noise and usually it's only a half second, second, maybe a two seconds noise and then it disappears, don't let the fact that it disappeared not worry you because chances are if you're hearing that there could be something imminent and you definitely want to follow up on that. And if you're driving a car, for example, like an N20 BMW, they're notorious for timing chains. Certain Audis have timing chains issues. Many Volkswagens do as well. But a lot of vehicles can have timing chain problems and you'll get that weird ring noise and then it's all gone. You also wanna listen for another extended, possibly another minute, you start hearing kind of banging and clunking and I don't mean excessive. Sometimes it's just like little clink, clink, like random little banging noises. Sometimes what that is is a lot of vehicles now often use forged pistons and once they heat up, they expand. And then they fill the voids within the cylinders and then they get quiet. But often when you run that vehicle, and it's cold, often that looser piston rattles and it's called piston slap and it sometimes it slaps in the piston, in the cylinder and it'll make that noise and you'll hear that random clink, clink, bang, bang. That may or may not be an issue. Some engines are designed that way, other engines aren't. Could also be an indicator of possibly rod bearing issues. If you wanna listen down, so you go down here and you wanna put your ear to the lower section of the engine listen down there and if you're hearing strange noises in that area it might be an indication that you actually have a rod bearing issue on the bottom end so you you want to hear that and what you'll find is when you accelerate or you give it revs 
it'll follow the revs. If it follows the revs, there's a good chance you have a bad wrist pin or rod or a rod bearing issue in the bottom end. That means absolutely run away. So timing chain issues, rod bearing issues, excessive smoke out of the tailpipe, all key issues means you want to get the hell out of Dodge and skip on that vehicle. Okay, so another thing you want to listen to once the vehicle's warmed up is Listen for that tick, 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 tick on the top of the engine. Sometimes that's an indication for excess of valve wear, excess, excess of valve guide seal or valve guide wear as well. Might mean a top end rebuild build if it's bad enough or if you notice that it's only from one part of the engine. If some engines actually make a little bit of that noise, these overhead camshaft style engines often make a little ticky noise anyway, that could be entirely normal. I know this engine here does inherently make a little more ticky noise, almost sounds like a modern day diesel. It's not dieseling, but there's a little bit of valve train noise, that's to be expected. But if you're hearing, hearing a little bit of an anomaly, something that stands out more on one or two cylinders, that could be an indication that you have a head issue on the engine. If you have to do that, that could cost you anywhere from three to $5,000 to get that sorted out. Okay, so next, after you figure it out and you're hearing all the noises or lack thereof, you probably wanna take the car for a drive. That's gonna be an indication as to whether you need to get the heck out or not. But first things first, the vehicle's warmed up, you're ready for a drive. What you wanna do is get in the vehicle, throw it in reverse, throw it in forward. Do a couple of those in and out. Make sure the transmission engages, disengages, engages, disengages, and that there's no extensive delays. If there's a long extended delay or all of a sudden there's a delay and then you touch the gas and then it kind of picks up, that could be transmission slipping. There could be an imminent problem in the transmission. Again, three, four, five thousand dollar replacement or repair. Some vehicles on the other hand have a U-joint and they might be a front engine with the transmission, but they might be rear wheel drive like that pickup truck over there. If that's the case, you put the car or the truck in gear, sometimes there's a delay and it goes clunk. Sometimes that's the U-joint there between your drive shaft, your differential, and there's a little slop in there. That's not a huge repair, but it's something to be aware of. Any kind of excessive drive line slipping, hard shifting, noise, grinding are all indicators you do not want that vehicle because any transmission or engine repair is going to start three four five thousand dollars and go up from there so normally i'm not overly concerned with a bad ball joint or a bad, bad strut or a shock those things are relatively easy to replace but the problem is that's usually also an indicator if you're driving the car and it's pulling or wandering it's not consistent Maybe there's some weird slop or noise in the suspension. Maybe it's clunking and banging and when you corner there's some grinding noises or it's just clunking really excessively over bumps. That could mean you might need some front end work. And the problem is a lot of these vehicles have engines that are transversely mounted a match to a transmission that drives directly to the front wheels. And at the very least that gets very expensive. If you have to start replacing control arms, upper, lower, ball joints, struts, shocks, if you had to do a whole front end on a car like this, that might cost you four or $5,000. So don't discount the fact that a poor driving car can actually cost you a significant amount of money and another one of those indicators that you want to get the heck out of Dodge. So as I said, a broken windshield, burnt out taillights, maybe even a set of rear brakes aren't necessarily something you want to run from. But when you're getting engine related issues, transmission issues, differential or entire front end problems, you either incorporate that into the asking or selling price of the car or you just get away from it because it's guaranteed going to cost you a whole pile of money. And the sad part is many dealers are slapping lipstick on a pig, but it's still a pig. Just because the low volume of vehicles available in the market, they're touching up bad paint, spray painting worn out seats and carpets, and doing the little things just to make the vehicle more sellable. But just remember, you don't want to get trapped buying that lemon. And with all of that said, be sure to click right there, the worst engines that you could possibly find on the market today. Hope to see you real soon. See you next time. Bye-bye.